what? Thanks to Victoria Police Apply Now and TAC Ditch Those Distractions. I'm Bianca Chatfield and joining me as usual, Ash Brazel, for another episode of Centre Court. I don't know if you're like me, but I don't know what round it is because there's so much netball going on at the moment. It's pretty exciting that pretty much every night we get a game, but I'd like to tell you we're halfway between round five, I think, at the moment, Ash. I want to know, yeah. quick question <laughs> to you, who's your standout team? Put Magpies aside. I want your standout team and your team that you think are not doing well enough. Oh, my standout team for me would be the Swifts. I'm loving how much rotation, seeing all different kinds of players. And my team not doing that good is the Queensland Firebirds, but I'm not saying it's their whole game. I love their first half of netball and I'm, I'm just like, wow, these guys are going to win it. And then half-time happens and then we lose them. So I think if they can get their half-time right, I think Firebirds, we might see them come back at the end of the year. Yeah, you're right. They haven't been able to get the wins as such, but there's been some players that have really stood out for me. And I think especially defensively, we saw Kim Jenner and Tara Hinchcliffe last year. You know, they got a lot of penalties. They weren't mm. getting enough ball. But this year, defensively, they are really standing up. Add Sunday into the mix mm. as well. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I reckon they're just not too far away from getting that win. So close. Now, let's get to the agenda. When you're on your phone, you are driving blind. Ditch the distractions, thanks to TAC. Now, our first agenda item that we have to go to is, I know the Vixens had a good win against the Fever yesterday, <laughs> but what we weren't expecting was that they were going to lose to the Thunderbirds on Sunday. It was a big loss for the Vixens, but if we flip it around, what an absolute positive it was for the Adelaide Thunderbirds to be able to beat the Vixens for the very first time since 2013 and the start of Suncorp Super Netball. Yeah, and we haven't talked much about the Adelaide Thunderbirds on this show. So, yeah, to get that win against the Vixens, I think it's a massive tick, I guess, and their history. You know, they haven't beat the Vixens yet, like you said. So, if I was a Vixens player, uh, sorry, a Thunderbirds player right now, I'd be cheering with that win. And you could see little glimpses that the Thunderbirds were a different team this year. They just had a bit more belief in themselves. Tanya Obbs, their coach, a South Australian, I think mm. has done a really good job bringing them together as a team. But other players that are standing out for me, Maisie Nankerville. Now, you might know her because I believe she was an AFLW Crows player at one stage and went away from netball. She's come back. She's doing really well. We spoke about Georgie Horges and, and her goal attack. She had a slow mm. start against the Vixens. But when the pressure comes and she needs to stand up in those final quarters, she is. And she's nailing those super shots. And she just looks like she's really fitting in and, and can really tackle everything. Hannah Petty is a South Australian. Kate Shimon is a South Australian, Sasha Glasgow. So I think it's, for me, it's about time that Adelaide Thunderbirds have actually gone to their own backyard to find the talent because they've got it there and now we're seeing them grow and develop into a team that's going to be, I think, really strong in the next few years. Yeah, and good on Adelaide because it's not just their, I guess, Adelaide team that they're going for, but they're juniors. You know, I think it always used to be New South Wales versus Vic yes. in the grand final, but <laughs> now we're seeing Adelaide. They're, they're winning most of the, the games, the under-17s, under-19s. They're a strong group in the underage, so I think it's yeah about time we're actually seeing them come through the mix. But also they're internationals. They've got some pretty good internationals. They so, do. <laughs> you know, I think if they keep growing, then, uh, yeah, they're, they're scary. <laughs> actually, a question without notice, and it, it causes all sorts of conversations when you're watching the Adelaide Thunderbirds, Shamira Sterling is their dominant defender and she really did put on a show against the Vixens. What are you thinking of her outfit? She she goes a bit different to most players in that she wears the long socks and I love that her hair is all in different braids every time you're seeing her play. I really like that she brings her personality to the game. Yeah, and I think it's a Jamaican thing. Yeah. Oh, I totally. <laughs> all of the Jamaicans, they love just being different. So the long socks, I'm waiting for the shooting sleeves to come out. But, <laughs> yeah, she in, she's a freak and I think... She doesn't even need to wear those long socks because you know when she's on the court, she is on the court. I just but. like that we usually see that down the shooting end where they bring their personality to or the game. Or a defender with a shooting sleeve just to uh, warm yeah, up I that arm. I just like that we finally got a defender who's actually owning it and just playing so well as well. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, rolling subs. This is my favourite rule. I'm so glad it's in. I hope it's here to stay. I think it's here to stay. But let's take a look at some of the teams and how they're using it, and especially how they're using it to their advantage. And the, I know this graph is all over the place, and I want to thank Alice Sweeting for this because she's doing all the research behind the scenes and putting mm. this up on Twitter. But if we have a look at that, it, the Swifts are the standout in especially rounds three, one, three and four for using 
um, their rotations. And then there's other teams down there like the Giants who aren't really using it as much. Is it an advantage, do you think, to be able to throw players out there at different times, Ash? I think it is when you have a player having a lapse. But my thing with the rolling subs, and probably only something that I've just really thought about, is who becomes accountable when a player is dominating? Like someone yeah. like Liz Watson, if she's having an amazing quarter and she's played on four wing defenders in that quarter, whose responsibility is it? Are you going at the whole four wing defenders? Or if I'm only on for two minutes, was it really my fault because I couldn't Ooh. even warm up into it? Um, and I think that's probably the old school me when I'm talking about <laughs> netball. Like I want to be up 15 minutes and I want to really grind Liz Watson into the ground for those 15 minutes. Are we seeing players having that opportunity to do that? So do you think it's more of a mentality shift that players now need to be comfortable with in that when you go out there, say you get two minutes, that you've got to actually be accountable for the stats that happen in those two minutes? Yeah, and I think it's like you've, you've got a role to do. If you're on for two minutes, like, you, you know, you're a role player. So you're going over two minutes to, am I going for that intercept or, or am I just out there now for that two minutes, Liz Watson can't touch the ball. Sorry, Liz, I'm using you as an example, <laughs> but she's been killing it and I think she's probably the play we are seeing most rotations on. Um, but, yeah, it's a different – I think if you're going out for two minutes, you need a role and it needs to be very clear of what you need to do for those two minutes. And interesting, if I put my defender's hat on, it's, it's quite hard to be able to set yourself up in the first quarter. You, you're used to playing on the play. You're trying to get the rhythm. You're trying to get the timing on the shot. Mm. But then when – if especially the shooters are changing around quite a bit and coming on for that super shot at the end of the, the quarter – it's really tough as a defender to change up your game and what you and your other defenders have been doing, potentially you've been splitting the circle. You have to be a lot quicker at doing that. So I actually think for defenders, it's actually a lot harder to cope with the changing. We're not seeing yeah. as much happening in the goal shooter position unless yeah. it's that last five. But yeah. And going off that graph, I think Swifts are the only ones that are really playing it with it in that, I guess, shooting end. You look at Magpies, my team, Shimona's not coming off in that yeah. five minutes and she's not a player that is putting those long bobs up. So you are expecting that goal attack if it is Gabby or if it is Naya to really put those two shots up. I would love to say in that five minutes, does Shimona come off and we're playing a two, two short circle um, players because we are seeing the Swifts doing it and they're winning. So I would love to see the Magpies do it just a little bit more. <laughs> well, if you love your stats, make sure you follow Alice Sweeting on Twitter because she's got all of those for you after every single round. That was the agenda. Ditch the distractions thanks to TAC. It's time for the nitty gritty. Thanks to Lexus of Berwick who are here for you. Contact the team and visit lexusofberwick.com.au. For me, the nitty gritty this week, it has to come down to that very, very close game, the Fever taking on the Magpies over the weekend. Now, we know it was controversial. At one stage during the second quarter, Alice Teague kneeled, took a super shot in the super shot zone, but apparently the umpire only signalled one goal. So only one goal was added. There was another muck up as well where apparently uh, Magpie's score wasn't added to the score line. Now, what happened after the game was that both teams put in a complaint, I believe, or, they want, or an inquiry. They wanted to know what had happened. They wanted to get more answers. This is what's come out now. So Super Netball were very quick to jump on it and, and send out a message that they had to review some of the, the rules. They had to review the process that takes place. So the issue being is that when the goal is scored, the umpire will signal one goal or two goals and they rely on the score bench to see what hand, you know, how many fingers they've held up. It's been something that has probably been a bit of an issue in our game, but we haven't really seen it kind of come to the forefront until now. So. The thing is, the one thing we need to be conscious of is Super Netball have come out and said that the, whatever the umpire signalled, whatever the decision was at the time, that mm. is the final decision. So the score is not going to be changed no matter what happens. They have come out and outlined that now um, the umpire who's not down that end, so who's on the other side, they can stop play call time before the next centre pass and they can actually now have a conversation about it. So they're encouraging the umpires to do that. They're encouraging the reserve umpire to have discussions with the score bench to clarify anything that might not be right. Uh, it's, it's something that we don't often see in our sport. We don't see things clarified like this in the way the umpires are controlling the game. So the score won't change for that particular one. But I do think it's been very good that the process has been debated and that they've, Suncorp Super Netball have actually taken a look at how it actually works because it hasn't changed for a long time. And I know in the past there's been games where it's been an issue. Mm. 
Well, what do you think, Ash? Look at you, you're staring I'm thinking, at me so I'm thinking. Yeah, and, and this is probably going to get me in trouble by Netball Australia, but I disagree with it um, about the how it, the scoreline just has to stay the same because, you know, this this is such a big thing. They've thrown it in, the two-point shots. We had players disagree with it. It's such a big thing now, and now we're not getting it right. So it does put a big question mark on it. And now we're saying we're, we're changing it up. And the spare umpire gets to really, I guess, have that chat with the bench officials. But for me, it's up. I think it's up to the teams because they're the ones really watching close. They know the coach knows if that player's put up a two-point shot or a one-point shot. If they don't get that opportunity to talk to the bench, like I just think it's such a big question mark. And they're so passionate. I think, you know, they should be able to talk to the bench in that moment. But we are the only sport that don't have a review system. We don't have the bird's eye view. We don't get the Hawk video eye. ref. We don't have any of that. And I think if you want to make this sport that a little bit more exciting, how wicked would it be if a coach could be like, nah, that was a two-point, video ref, the game stops, everyone's watching, is it a two-point, is it a one-shot? I just think that could really be thrown into our game at the moment. Mm, I actually always remember Monty and Gerard back in the day. She got pulled for contact or obstruction or something and she went like this saying, we need a video review. So you're yeah. saying bring in the video review. Bring reviews in the video system. review. And while I'm at it, B, I'm just going to change the sport completely. Okay, what else <laughs> have you got for me? I, one thing I did notice in the game, um, the shot, I didn't realise, and this is silly of me, but if, as a shooter, if the ball isn't through the hoop before the siren, it's an... It's not a goal. Mm -hmm. So even if the ball is left the hand, it's still not a goal. And I think that's something we could change. If the shooter has time to release the ball, the ball's mid-air and then the siren goes, if it goes in, I still think it should be a shot. Now, I think it's got to be on its way down into the ring. It doesn't have to be in the ring. As if the shooter's let the ball go and it's gone up and it's on the way down, then it counts. But if it's on the way up, it doesn't count. Yeah, see, I just think if it's out of the I hands... Think, I don't know. If it's out like, of the hands, and this is me going off football... If it's, oh, footy, yeah. So yeah if the ball is in the air and it goes through, like, it's still a goal. And I just think that's netball. If a, a shooter is quick enough to release the ball, let them no have the way. goal. No The shooters get too many rules to their advantage. But we imagine imagine the pause as the <laughs> ball's in the air. I just think... Well, it's well, also... I mean, it's hard for the umpires, isn't it, to call that? Like, when they're... they're yeah, they're it's here. not like that like you can just see the ball they're coming like, oh, down. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, just, Trajectory if it's out of the down. hands, it should be a shot. <laughs> Uh, Make it exciting. This is why I love it. having you on this show, Ash. You always bring up some random things, but worth considering. Thank you. <laughs> that was the nitty gritty. Thanks to Lexus of Berwick, so, who are here for you, even in stage four here in Victoria. Now it's time where I hand over to Ash Brazel for Brazilian for the week. This week's Brazilian goes to one of my favourites, Liz Ellis. And um, I don't know if you're a fan, Bianca, but I'm definitely a fan. I'm a fan, except I just had to sit on the bench behind her for a long time. But she was that amazing, I couldn't even kick her off the court. Well, one thing I love about Liz Ellis is she's always paying it forward to our sport. And she is on Sports Sundays. And she always talks about netball. And that's the biggest thing I've noticed over this weekend and watching so much sport and probably showing a little bit of a geek side and how much <laughs> sport shows I do watch. But she is always talking about our sport. And now she's got the whole panel wanting to know about the two-point shots, the sub rules, all of those things. And I think because she has pushed netball so much, we are now seeing the likes of the footy show with Tony Jones always talking about netball. We're seeing Clint Stanaway talking about it on the news. You're even doing a podcast about it. There's just so much talk about netball and I'm absolutely loving it. But the fact that Liz Ellis has pushed it so hard, you know, she was the Australian captain and I think she's still just showing that colours. But um, great work, Liz, and I absolutely love your work. Yeah, so thank you for paying it forward. You. Couldn't agree with you more. She's she's certainly shown all of us how to do it as yeah. well and that to speak about all the issues and not just speak about the fun and nice stuff that happens in netball. Um, and also I think, you know, Annie Sargent was a huge driver in that in being, you know, part of the commentary team in the early days. But Liz Ellis has really stood out. And um, shout out to all the Channel 9 commentary team because I tell you what... We obviously couldn't all commentate. We had to stay here in Victoria. So they've only got four of them up there. So to Gordy, um, Kath Cox, Liz Ellis and Laura Geitz, you're doing an amazing job having to cover all the games. It's a lot of netball. It is a lot of netball. <laughs> it's, it's a lot a to talk about. It's a lot of stats and it's a lot of players <laughs> that you've got to learn a lot about. So they're doing a great job. Ash, it's now time for the final say. Victoria Police are recruiting now. Search police careers and apply to be a force for good. I'm going to hog 
this part first, right? I'm going to go to of me. Of course you I'm are. I'm going to throw to myself for the, the Bianca <laughs> final show. say. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> but this week, my final say is I am absolutely loving that we have teams of 12. The rolling subs, it makes sense. We're seeing all this great talent. Netball, please, please, please find the money to be able to keep teams of 12 from here on in. I know it's only in at the moment because of the well-being of the players and it's really officially meant to be 10 contracted players, but... I want them to find a way because I am loving seeing more young Australian talent out there on court and the rolling sub rule just really you know, adds to that and mm. makes it such a better spectacle. So please, please, please keep that for the future. You know what? I'm going to change my final say and it's going to be exactly what you have just said, but let's not add 12 players. Let's keep it as 10 and let's add two new teams because I what? think... What? <laughs> I just think seeing how much young talent there is out there, I think that's been the biggest question mark I guess having the SSN is, yep. you know, there's not enough talent to add an extra couple of teams. This le this year, it's shown that there is so much talent out there for Australians that we could actually have another two teams, I think, bring out there. And then you're not just having the question mark about internationals. We've got enough players that we can select for diamonds out there. So I think bring in another two teams. Wow. How do you feel about if, that? If you're going to say such outrageous things, I want you to tell me where are these two teams going? What states are they going to be in? Well, there's no there's no team in uh, <laughs> Tasmania. I think you know Northern we're apart territory. all the territory. ACT. Yeah. And I just think ACT and um, Tasmania are two big states for me because one Collingwood uh, we're linked with them, so we have a couple home games there a year. And to be honest, I wish all of our games were in Tassie because we get a sellout crowd. The crowd is loud. There is so much atmosphere in Tasmania. Our whole team love playing there, so I think a tick for Tasmania instantly. And Giants are linked with Canberra. So we've already got netball in two different states, but they don't have their own team. So... What's to stop those Let's teams, though, getting imports in those positions? You know, your goal shooter, goal keeper positions that are always flooded by imports. What's to stop these two teams doing the same thing? Well, they don't have to. They, <laughs> they can still have them because if they're the best... This is, and this goes to my talking point about last week. It should just be the best of the best. I don't care if they're international, if they're Australian. If you were the best goal shooter, you own that position. But we have young, great goals, goalers now. Like Emma Ride, what? We need her on the court. Yeah, yep. We just need her on the court. Naya Allen versus Gabby Simpson. I know that... Uh, Simpson, Sinclair, I know they're both in my team, but they both deserve to be out on court and we need two extra teams at least. And I, I think we need more games as well. I want more games. <laughs> I'm not a player that is trying to cut games. Let's have a few more rounds. And Netball Australia, Ash Brazel is going to fund the league as well. So that's awesome. We I also could sure. be the CEO, Bianca. Watch this space. <laughs> I love your passion, Ash, that's for sure. That was the final say. Thanks to Victoria Police. Apply now. Whew, that's been an intense show. There's been so <laughs> much cool we've been here. to speak about. There's been, you've solved all the problems of the world. Thank you. Oh, I can only imagine what you're going to come up with next week. But thanks, Ash. I love it always. That was Senate, Senate Court. Thanks to TAC. When you're on your phone, you are driving blind. Ditch the distractions. And Victoria Police, who are recruiting now, search police careers and apply to be a force for good. We'll see you next week.